it's never a good day when someone loses their job, but sadly that happened to Les Miles yesterday. So you're the man that hired him. So take me back to 12 years ago when he first came to this program, what it was like. Well, uh, as I was out on a coaching search, uh, we were late, uh, meaning that uh, Nick Saban wanted to wait uh, to tell his team in Orlando, Florida, uh, playing in the uh, bowl there. And uh, we took off on an airplane to search like, you know, my counterpart Joe will do. And we spoke to, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 people, made uh, dozens and dozens of phone calls. And uh, Les had something besides being very personable. He had small children. I thought that was very important uh, because everybody loves Baton Rouge. But... Uh, uh, I've never met anybody as an AD when they come down here who didn't love it, you know. And uh, in order to get away from that three and out, three and out, three and out, like Michigan, Tennessee, Florida, and many other schools, and LSU before that, uh, we I wanted somebody that would stay a while, and I knew if they had children, they had a much better chance. But uh, Les had been very successful, and as you can see now, the Oklahoma State program is a top program. Uh, he uh, he uh, impressed all of us that were there. Uh, he came over, and I must say, uh, the first thing that happened was he was replacing a national championship legend-like coach. And, of course, that's always tough, but he handled it with grace and aplomb. He was really good at it. Uh, never bothered him. But just about the time he was ready to go in the worst disaster in the history of Louisiana, Katrina hits, and we can't play the first game. We can't play the second game. The third game is moved to Arizona, uh, Arizona State, and we play them on their field because we can't play because our uh, there's such a great response here by LSU and, and the community uh, and a lot of outsiders that came in but they're using the Pete Maravich Center and the field house and we can't play here you know the campus is uh, too many ambulances too many helicopters Les agrees to play on the road which he wins in the first game and uh, then he has to play like nine weeks in a row, which is an NC2A. We can't. We had to get permission. <laughs> and, of course, if you play nine weeks in a row, it's really tough on your kids. And uh, he lost a few. So by the time he goes into the conference race, you know, he lost a few. Georgia had a one-time uh, super-duper effort. So he ended up uh, 11 and two, as if that was some kind of a bad thing. But w what really impressed me was his grace under pressure. He handled it wonderful. Well, the mother of all distractions, as football coaches put it, uh, he handled it uh, gracefully. And in his first year, when you consider that, uh, uh, that was wonderful. So you mentioned him having to fill Nick Saban's shoes, and you said that that never bothered him. What do you, how do you think he dealt, though, with not being able to beat him? Because since 2012, the national championship, that hasn't happened. Okay. Um, uh, what we have here is uh, that led to um, uh, Joe Oliva and the 16 board members, which have every right in the world, you know, to do this, okay? And uh, I certainly am not second-guessing that decision. Uh, I think it was uh, their decision, and I think it was done at the right time, and I think they're doing it the right way. Um, I think but what we have to think back, though, is this is the toughest conference in the United States, but this division is the toughest division inside of a conference in the United States. And uh, another thing I must say that Saban's ability 
is uh, uh, as good as I've ever seen. And it reminds me of uh, Phil Mickelson, the left-handed golfer, playing against Tiger Woods in his prime. He came in fourth, four times second to Tiger Woods. It's tough to beat. Nobody beats Coach Saban very often. Okay. Um, but I think what we have to uh, look at is 114 wins, uh, but it's an awful lot, national championship, two SEC titles. Uh, I think uh, guys here, 12 years, never a smear or scandal. I mean, he's got four children. They go right through school. <laughs> he graduates. He's probably the best in the conference uh, at graduating students. And he has less trouble off the field than most of the others. The, as you know, uh, the kids just adore him. He is a player's coach. When he comes into the living room, he can, uh, it isn't so much he charms him. It's they catch his believability. They are really sincere. And all the phone calls that I make, everybody loves him. And even now, people may say, well, it's time. Well, coaching fatigue. But mostly fan fatigue. You know, every year, 5% you're upset and 5% more. <laughs> 10 years and 11, 11 years at a school and entering your 12th year is an awful lot. Okay, and of course, the national championship, and you know, he wins 77% of the games, but here that's not enough. <laughs> you know, so I must say he, he's been a great man, a great role model, a great represent, representative of LSU. So at the end of the day, I know right now, of course, fans have very short-term memory. Don't think about the 114 wins. They're just thinking about what happened in Auburn this weekend. But in a couple of years, once you know everyone's moved on, how do you think his legacy will be as the LSU head coach? It's wonderful. Um, I think that Les can come back, in, or maybe he'll never leave, but in four or five years, regardless of what happens and who's coaching, and he can say, you know, there was an era where I picked them up, see, and we had two national championships, one with Nick, and then he followed in 207, and conference championships and, and uh, NFL-type players, and he did an awful lot. He did it with a uh, personality that was uh, quirky, and I mean that in a nice way. Mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't just like any coach, you know, that didn't pay attention to students or any particular reporter. And he treated everybody with respect and dignity. And uh, he, he smiled a lot. And uh, he, he did the best he could in a, in a very, very tough situation. And I, I just want to say, I hope to God we don't get into that three and out, three and out, three and out. And uh, like now it looks like Tennessee finally got the guy because they got a signature win, but they've been through three coaches. Mm -hmm. Michigan, the oldest football of all time, went four years with Rich Rodriguez, four years with Brady Hope, all eight years were losers. Now they got Jim Harborough. I hope we don't have to go through that. And that's his legacy. Mm -hmm. His legacy is we don't have to go through that. He came in and he gave us what we asked for.